Um, let's do it together then. A movie theater increased the ticket price for evening shows by 10% and decreased the ticket price for morning shows by 40%. So some figures. So, um, you know, when I read this, I'm not writing down anything for now, but I'm, you know, making a mental note that there is a movie theater. They have morning shows and they have evening shows and they have specific, you know, di perhaps different kind of pricing for morning and evening. Now they have increased the ticket pricing of their evening shows over here and they have decreased the ticket pricing for their morning shows maybe to encourage more people to come in the morning anyway evening shows sell well whatever yeah so that's what is that is what is um that is what i'm um thinking about yeah it's i'm visualizing that okay now the average number of tickets sold for the morning shows increased by 30 percent well makes sense since the ticket price reduced or something the you know number of tickets sold increased and the average number of tickets sold for the evening shows decreased by five percent kind of makes sense because the price increased for the evening show so all right now what was the percentage change in total revenue so for now i'm just thinking total revenue total revenue how do i calculate that i'll say how do we calculate revenue that is simply i know it is price into the quantity right so i have you know the price is being talked about over here and the quantity is being talked about over here so but it's price into quantity so in case i'm going to get the total revenue that will be the price of the morning ticket into the quantity of the morning ticket plus price of the evening ticket into quantity of evening ticket Again, visualizing, it's just too much hassle to write all of that. And, uh, you know, in case I'm going to be having like so many variables, I won't really need to calculate much in that, right? I know that. So I'm just, uh, it's just, again, a visualization that this is what revenue is. And let me go into my statement one. Okay, one. Prior to the change in ticket prices, the ticket prices for the morning shows and the evening shows were the same. All right. So then, PM and PE are the same, yeah, but the QM, the quantity of the morning show and quantity of the evening shows, they are not same. So that is why I will not be able to get the percentage change in total revenue. So then this statement alone is not going to be sufficient. If I look at two, prior to the changes in ticket prices, the ratio between number of tickets sold for the morning shows and the evening shows was five is to eight. So now I have the ratio of my QM and QE, the quantities of morning and evening, which means that my Qs will get canceled in the entire thing, but PM and PE are still there without using my statement one, yeah? So this will also be not be sufficient alone. But if I'm going to use both of them together, my P's and my Q's both will get cancelled and I'll get a quantity. And that is why I'll mark this as C and I will move on. I will not do a single calculation more. But that is in case I'm visualizing it accurately, in case I'm thinking about it correctly. Yeah, I, I can do that only if I know exactly what is going on. And uh, I'll show you how, I'll write down the variables and I'll show you exactly what is going on. But do realize that you do not need to write down a single variable in this case, yeah? This is what should go on in your mind. Now I say total revenue, how do I get total revenue? That is PM into QM, where I said this is price of the morning uh, tickets and you know quantity of the morning tickets plus PE into QE, which is my price of evening and quantity of evening. Now, when there is a new TR, new total revenue, because the price has increased somewhere, decreased somewhere, quantity has changed, et cetera, et cetera, I'm not going to uh, currently write down these values here, 10, 40, 30, 5, I'm not going to write down. But so, for example, I'll just, I'll just put down something, whatever comes to my mind. For example, I'm just going to say put down 11 by 10, yeah, into PM. Um, I hope you remember our um, multipliers for uh, percentages, right? When a percentage increases by 10, we say that 10% increase means a multiplication of 11 by 10. And we've talked about how important it is to understand that because it improve. I mean, it, it you know, it, uh, you can avoid calculations so much in case it's a multiplication, right? Multiplication helps you avoid calculations, things get cancelled off, etc. So we'll never write it x plus 10% of x, right? We'll always write immediately as 11 by 10 of x, one of the few things which are essential to basically save time, right? 
so um we, we've talked about it so it's fine yeah I'll, I'll, i've just written down something whatever i felt like and only because i'm putting down some values i'm not even looking at what exactly is given to me so let's say i don't know this became five into six qm something happened some change happened in percentages whatever it might be i'm just ignoring it let's say this became three by four pe it could be anything i don't know this became 13 by 10 qe again it could be anything i don't know so this is my new tr yeah, this is my new total revenue. Now, if I want to find the percentage change in total revenue, how do we calculate that? We know that percentage change is given by new upon old minus one. Yeah, or, you know, it, it's nothing but simply new minus old upon old, we know, but normally we will use this form, right? Because there is this particular fraction over here, things get cancelled, it just becomes a little easier. So our percentage change is going to be given by this particular thing. Okay, so that means for my percentage change, I'll need to take the new TR, which is this whole thing divided by the old TR, which is my PM, QM plus PE, QE and then minus one and into 100, I'm going to get my percentage. So all those things are irrelevant. If I can get the value of this particular entire expression, right, then I'll get my percentage change, the exact value of it. Now, my statement one says that the ticket prices for the morning and the evening shows were the same, which means that instead of the PM and the PQ, PE, sorry, I can write P everywhere, right? I can change this to P, I can change this to P, I can change this to P and I can change this to P, right? I can just cancel all these, they are both the same. The moment I do this, what will happen? My P's I'll take common from here, I'll remove it. P's I'll take common from here and I'll remove it. And I know that my percentage change becomes independent of P. This is, but if, this is if I'm visualizing that yes, there is a PM and there is a QM and you know, right? Then I'll make everything P, P's get taken out, they get canceled and everything is over. P's are over, yeah? But then with my statement one, I can I know that my QM and my QE are still going to be there. Depending on the QM and the values of QE, I'll get the total percentage change. So then I cannot get my answer just now, yeah? This is not sufficient. When I look at my statement two, now I've been given that my uh, number of, for the morning and for the evening shows are in the ratio of 5 is to 8, which means that I can just say there are 5A and 8A. This is a ratio, right? So if I am to, you know, if I want to get everything in the same terms, I, I can write this as a 5A and I can write this as an 8A. I can write this as a 5A and I can write this as an 8A. Yeah. The moment I do this, what happens if I'm talking about my statement two alone, I don't have any information on the PM and the PE. So my statement two alone is not sufficient. But the moment I club them together, my P's were already removed by statement one, my expression became independent of P's. And now my expression becomes independent of Q's also. Why? Because everything is in terms of A. I'm going to take A common and I'm going to cancel that out as well. And then I'll do whatever this particular whole calculation will be and this whole calculation will be. And then of course, I'm going to keep in mind that this is a data sufficiency question. So I don't have to do the exact calculation. Yeah, all the A's get canceled. Everything P's got, um, get canceled. A's got, get, that is Q's get canceled. And I'm just left with numbers to work with. And that is going to give me an answer, right? And that is the reason why I know that, okay, answer over here is going to be C. Yeah? Does that make sense? But I, you don't have to write any of this. Look, think about it. Once you realize what is going on, you don't have to see it and you don't have to make it happen on a piece of paper. If you can just think about, okay, what is happening, that is going to be enough. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know, there is this one case that you have to ensure that you're thinking about very clearly. Yeah. Um, when is it that, you know, you could make a mistake over here, for example. Think about a case where, which could be a trap. Anyone has any ideas? You've understood what we have done, right? We've not even, you know, taken the exact values. We've just taken some placeholders and we know what is going to happen and everything. But then where, what can be a trap over here? What can be a problem over here? Which 
when I'm looking at the values, when I'm looking at 10, 40, 35, you know, I'm giving you a hint here, then I'm noticing that, okay, the values are such that I can just ignore them. It doesn't matter. Uh, when it's given relations like more than or less than. Um, yeah, so certainly when values are not the same or not given as ratios, then we cannot do it. Of course, then it will be, you know, we'll have to do plus so and so, of course, then, you know, then that is not possible for sure. But then again, I, the, the logic has to, again, you know, it's a GMAT question in case it expects me to take four variables and then work with them. That question is just not worth my time. Yeah, if I have to spend that, I'm going to complete my entire section and then maybe come back to it. But I don't expect to see a question like that at all. Yeah, there has to be a logic, there has to be something in the question to ensure that I'm able to solve it in two minutes. But yeah, fair enough. Of course, I cannot use this method in case, you know, I'm not given these ratios. But for example, think about it, what happens if your values over here, like, you know, what are the actual values that the um, movie theater evening show it, the price increased, right, increased by 10%. So this one is your 11 by 10 the evening show and uh, let me find the uh, average number of tickets sold for the evening show decreased by 5% which gives me 19 by 20 yeah now what in case um, you know the values are such that for the morning show for example they decrease the price by 5% yeah, and so it is say 19 by 20 into 11 by 10, and then the number of morning shows, the quantity sold, let's say, increased by 10%. For example, if this is what is given to me, yeah, what happens in that case? In that case, my multiplier factor for both the terms becomes the same, right? Now, in my numerator here also, I have 19 into 11 upon 200 into PM, QM plus here also I have 19 into 11 upon 200 and PE and uh, QE, right? Upon I have PM, QM plus PE, QE, right? What is happening? I take this common and this entire thing gets, yeah, I'll, I'll take 19 into 11 by 200 common, right? I take it out. And this entire thing gets canceled off in that case. Yeah. So the percentage change is given by this minus one into 100 directly. Yeah. So essentially the change um, that is happening to the morning shows is the same as the change which is happening to the evening shows. And that is why overall that will just be the change. Right. Yeah. If. If I'm increasing, you know, one quantity by the same amount and I'm increasing the other also by the same amount, then their entire sum will also get increased by the same amount only, isn't it? So then we won't even need our statements one and two, right? But anyway, you know, given the numbers that they've given, we know very well that, okay, that is not the case. So answer is C over here.